this is 365801 and this is video number 8 in my Behind Closed Drawers BL Collection Tour series where I go through all of my BL collection. Um, in this drawer we will find June manga and June Yari novels and a couple of other random things as well. So if you're interested in my June manga collection uh, stick around and I'll go through some of what I've got. So I'm going to start with uh, the manga that uh, June published um, in the front row and this is because they are the smaller trim size so the newer volumes all of my uh, June manga at the back are the larger trim size um, and so they're a little bit older. Um, this volume here is Flutter by Momoko Tenzin. Um, I bought it I think from the actual June manga website uh, so I got it brand new um, and it's a really nice story. I like Momoko Tenzin, I've got a few of her work. Um, this one I, I've i only read once. I took the plastic off, I read it, I really enjoyed it and um, it's kind of sat there in the shelf now or well, in the drawer at the moment. Um, I really enjoyed it though. I remember I liked it. I can't remember what it's about but I know that it was a good one. <laughs> so if you can get hold of it, I do recommend it. Oh dear, I could talk about this story for hours. I love it. <laughs> This is the uh, spin-off uh, to the very popular Close the Last Door, which has two volumes, which I have volume one of, but volume two is very, very difficult to get hold of. So unfortunately, that will be one that um, I will be forever looking for. Um, this one, on the other hand, Open the Door to Your Heart, Yamada Yugi, Yugi Yamada title. I prefer anyway, so I was so happy to be able to get a copy. Oh, I just love this one. And that is um, uh, because th it deals with the other Honda brothers. The main character um, in Close the Last Door is one of the Honda brothers, and he has uh, two elder brothers. Uh, is it Sho Shoichi and Shinji? And these are the uh, the story of these brothers. So um, you might be thinking, oh, incest, not great. Um, but uh, it's kind of a bit like that anyway. They're not real brothers, but they are cousins. So they've been brought up in the same household. Um, is it Shoichi? Shoichi's the older one, I think. Uh, he's the older cousin that is the brother. Uh, brought up in the, the household and he is a tax collector so he's very straight laced and uh, he has you know very stiff personality and then there's Shinji who's very free uh, spirited um, an adventurer and he's gone off traveling and and the reason he's gone off traveling is because he's in love with his brother or slash cousin <laughs> and um, they're both they're in love with each other oh come on they're in love with each other and the um, the, the sexual tension was just too much and they had a bit of a, a dalliance and the only, he said fine but you can have me but then you must leave so he left oh it's sad but then they end up meeting again um, there's some really fantastic supporting cast members in this story that are crazy Yamada Yugi just writes the best dialogue it's like Watching a 1940s um, Hollywood movie, you know, it's tight. The writing is tight. Um, all the little jokes, all the little side, uh, you know, comments and um, the characters themselves are interesting and weird. It is a bit like watching a 1940s comedy romance, you know, just, I really like it. I love uh, Yamada Yugi's work. Um, I'm such a huge fan. I really would like to get all of her works in English, but I think I'm missing obviously the second volume of Close the Last Door, and I think I'm missing one more as well. So hopefully I'll be able to get that by the end of the year. That's my mission to get the last volume that I can. And we'll see. No, there's actually a couple more. Oh no, there is, there's a couple more. There's a few more that are expensive to get. So my quest continues for more Yamada Yugi. I love her so much. This is Return of the Prince by Junko. Uh, this is a series of short stories in one tankobon. It's very beautiful, the cover work is very nice, but the work inside, the artwork is lovely as you'd expect by Junko. Um, she is probably now more well known for her series Kiss Him Not Me, which did incredibly well in terms of the manga as well as the anime. Um, so that's her most popular title at the moment, which is 
on the, the back of her BL work. Um, this is a nice solid title, the stories are good, they're engaging but they're not um, as engaging as her other title which she put out and I think that's like Mr. Minimart, I think that's what it's called, Minimart, something like that. It's a great title, that one's brilliant, that's a really good one. This one's okay, it's not as good, um, but uh, yeah, it's one of the newer titles by June that they've released. Um, um, but yeah, this is one that I got, and um, you could only get it from the website, so it cost a lot more than I would have liked to have spent. So that kind of made me a bit annoyed. So I bought some other things, just so that the postage was worth it, because it's not actually worth it um, to buy things from America and have it shipped from America. It's just too expensive. But if that's the only way you can get it, then that's the only way you can get it. So for people who live uh, not in America, even people in Canada have to spend a lot to get things shipped. And um, yeah, so it's not necessarily worth the monetary investment to buy something and have it shipped all the way here. But this one was, I think, like a birthday present. So I indulged. One of my uh, newly acquired purchases, that's why it's in this drawer, because there's space. Um, Honey Coloured Pancakes by Keiko Kinoshita. I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it because it looks great and I like Keiko Kinoshita's work. So, um, yep, gonna try and collect all of her work. She does have quite a, a few titles in digital as well, but um, yeah, happy to have this one. It looks good, it looks like one I'll enjoy. This is another one of my newly acquired purchases, that is Moonlit Promises by Soya Himawari and this was uh, going for a lot of money and I managed to get it for a really good price so I'm really happy about that. Um, she does have other work available, um, Happiness Recommended which I have a copy of and also I think it's like right here right now which I don't have yet so those are um, a couple of titles I need to get for um, my June manga collection. Sleepless Nights is another fairly recent acquisition um, and I read it straight away. <laughs> Even though the artwork on the front doesn't really um, appeal to me, I actually really enjoyed it. The artwork inside was much better and Sachi Murakami's work was really fun and it was engaging and this was, um, yeah, this is a good one. I really in enjoyed reading it. It was nice so I recommend it if you can get a copy. As I've said, some of the ones I'm getting recently, um, I've managed to get them for really good prices, but you can't always. And when I've gone looking for them in the past, they've been extortionate. So you have to kind of wait it out, hunt around, lie in wait, and um, and then pounce just when it's at a, you know at the right price. And I managed to get this. Um, it's not the best condition, but I'm happy to have it in my collection. So these are the Kizuna Deluxe Editions that I have in this collection. This is by Kazuma Kodaka. Um, I have Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 4 and Volume 5. In my other collection I have Volume 6 and I am missing Volume 3. Um, these generally go for quite a lot, around anywhere between 15 and 20 pounds a volume. So when I can get them for a cheaper price, I try to, so um, if I've been able to get it. Usually though you can get, like for some strange reason, volume 2, you can get um, a, a cheap copy. And volume 6 you can get a cheap copy. Um, but volume 3 is actually quite tricky to get hold of without paying £20. And I don't really want to spend £20, although that is kind of around the retail. I think the retail recommended retail is around £17.99, something like that. So. If I get it for less than that, it's actually good, but I would like to be able to get it for a lot less than that um, and actually just find it sometimes. So I'm going to keep my beady eyes out for a good copy um, that's not too expensive. These are all in really excellent condition. You can see uh, 4 and 5 are brand new. I got, oh actually volume 2 is brand new, volume 6 I got brand new, so only volume 1 was a second hand title. That, that might have actually been brand new too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just volume 3 that I'm missing. Um, Kizuna is a classic. It's probably one of the first manga that I, yaoi manga that I read um, when I was still going like, what is yaoi? What is this? What? And I read a bit of it and went, wow! <laughs> if you've ever watched Barakamon when one of the characters is reading a story and then like throws the manga across the room, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my reaction. <gasps> Only it wasn't, um, it was my laptop. Dunk! <laughs> it 
what is this? Um, because it was um, me finding out, I was doing some research on what this was. So yeah. <laughs> This is my growth experience, Kizuna. So it holds a special place in my heart. Um, so I really would like to get the third volume so I can have the complete set and probably try and get the uh, older versions as well. So moving on to the uh, back row, these are all the larger trim, um, older titles of June manga. So that's why they're the size that they are. And they usually have the uh, pink trim at the bottom. Uh, this is Blue Sky by Yuko Kawabara. Um, I have not read it yet. I don't know what it's about. Um, I can't really help you. But yes, there'll be a lot of that, I'm afraid to say, going forward um, with the larger trim ones. I buy them, but I don't always get around to reading them yet. So there'll be quite a few in this back row that I haven't actually read um, and I don't really have an opinion on. So Blue Sky is one of them, I'm afraid. I don't know much about it. Alone in My King's Harem uh, by Lily Hoshino. This is one of her works that were published by uh, DMP um, rather than the June, under the June manga um, imprint. This is a DMP one. Um, and obviously, as I've already gone through, she has quite a lot of her BL works published by uh, Yen Press when they first started printing. So this is one of the June titles. Um, Yep, I like this one. I like Lily Hoshino's work. I enjoy it. It's uh, got fantasy elements, which I enjoy. It's got beautiful artwork, which I enjoy. The stories are playful and fluffy. There's cute smexiness in there. It's got a little bit of everything. It's really nice. Um, I, yeah, highly recommend Alone in My King's Harm. It's nice. It's a nice little um, volume to have in the collection. This is A Gentleman's Kiss, Volumes 1 and 2 by Shin Rui Fua and um, I'm really happy to be able to have this. It's a complete set in just the two volumes. Um, it has her distinctive art style, so it's quite an easy read and it has that same sort of feel in terms of like the business suits and things as Yebi Celebrities, but I think this one is a type of businessman slash Yakuza type story. Um, so if you're interested in businessmen, if you're interested in Yakuza um, and gangs and stuff like that, then you probably quite enjoy this. Um, a Gentleman's Kiss. I, I do think that uh, these are not the best conditioned copies. I did get them for a really, really good price, but you can see there's a bit of yellowing on my volume one. There's a small tear as well in the outer uh, edge, so I'm going to have to clean them up a bit and make them a bit nicer if I can. But yeah, um, A Gentleman's Kiss is a good one if you enjoy Shinri Fua. Now this one I read just recently. This is A Love Song for the Miserable by Yuki Mura and this is about um, Asada and Nao who are um, someone who works for a, a department store in Japan and department stores in Japan are very very different from department stores here in the UK and probably in America as well. Um, they're very upmarket fancy places uh, and Asada I think um, yeah, there's, it's the story between the two people, and one of them ends up becoming a patisserie. patissier, and um, it's over a long period of time, it's kind of a nice slow burn. Yuki Mura's work was funny, I just read this recently, so yeah, it, it still kind of has that lasting Im impression. Um, but I, I always thought there was more Yuki Mura work out there, but I think this might be the only one that's in English, uh, which is a bit of a shame. She's got that same comedic... Uh, touch as uh, Toko Kawaii, so it's a shame that this is the only one I think that they have. Now the next title I have is Flower of Life Volumes 1 and Volume 3 by Fumi Yoshinaga. These are DMP titles, not the um, June imprint titles. Um, I've not read them. I would like to be able to get Volume 4, but I doubt that's going to happen. I think I could probably get Volume 2 uh, at some point. Uh, but it's not a priority. I haven't read it yet. Uh, don't know anything about it. This is La Satanaka by Momoko Tenzen. So this is the second title. Uh, the other one was Flutter. Um, and this I thought, oh, this sounds great. La Satanaka. That sounds gothic and, and dark and probably quite fun. Um, and it's not. It's a high school, <laughs> it's a high school story. <laughs> Why is it called La Satanaka? 
Why? I don't know. Um, I haven't read it yet, actually, because I was, I think, a little bit disappointed in the fact that it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, I will get around to reading it, though, because I do like Momoko Tenzin. I'm going to see what else I have of hers. I might actually have all of her published works. I'll have to check. Um, but yeah, this is a high school um, romance, uh, and it is a one-shot volume, so the, the story is throughout. So that's quite a good thing. I like it when it's all contained. So yeah, more Momoko Tenzin. Now, uh, Makoto Tatono's Ninth Sleep I read fairly recently last year for um, one of the readathons, and I didn't hate it. <laughs> I was having a bit of a Makoto Tatano hate on for some strange reason, but this one actually helped me to to see the positives in her work, and that's because it it, it is a, a yaoi Jun manga title, but there's a sort of lack of yaoi. There's a lack of yaoi, distinct lack of yaoiness in it. It's very light on the on the yaoi and more heavier on the fantasy aspect, but very similar to some of her other works. So it wasn't a bad title. Ninth Sleep, if you can get hold of it, it's an okay one to get. Uh, I have reviewed it already for another video, so I'll see if I can put a link up for that if you're interested in knowing more about Ninth Sleep. One Night Lesson by Ryo Takagi is also one that I have read fairly recently for a readathon, so that should still be in, I think, the same, maybe the same one, um, same video. This was one of Ryo Takagi's earlier works. It's like a series of stories, the main ones about students who are rivals. It was very throwaway, it was very old school. Um, I can't say I really enjoyed it that much. Uh, looking back on it now, it's kind of like, mm, meh. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'd really like to see some of her uh, works that she's producing right now in print in English, just to see what the comparison is, um, because I think she's developed a lot um, over the years, because this is a very old title, so it would be nice to see what she's producing now, which I think would be a lot more polished. This is Golden Prince and Argent King. Argent, is that how you say it? Uh, by Koko Agawa and I have two copies of this and I have read neither of them. <laughs> so I don't really know what it's about and I don't know if it's a good title or not. Um, the artwork on the front doesn't really appeal to me that much so I haven't actually ever bothered to pick it up. I will at some point but um, for now I can't help, I don't know what it's about. I thought I had read this Ayumi Kano title, Passionate Theory, but when I looked through it and flicked through uh, the story, uh, it, none of it rang a bell. None of it rang a bell. So I m maybe read some of her other works <laughs> and um, I have no idea what Passionate Theory is about. I read the synopsis on the back, I, it did not ring a bell at all. It was about someone who's wanting to study abroad. No, no, ah, no memory of this whatsoever. I didn't know I had it. <laughs> Obviously I've read some of her works before but not this one. I read this title uh, sometime last year. I kind of wish I'd kept it for like a Halloween October read and so I think it would be a good October read to have. Um, and that's Necratoholic and that is Maguro Wasabi. The art style is not particularly attractive to me um, but I love the story. It's just a, a great story. <laughs> It's about a vampire who no longer wants to be a vampire and suck blood because um, he's kind of uh, in love with a vampire hunter. <laughs> so it's one of those kind of stories. Uh, a dampir, or dampir? Vampir? I don't know how you would say that. But yeah, they're both wanting to kill each other because one's the hunter and one's the hunted. And um, uh, But they also have, you know, smexy times as well. So it's very playful, silly. Um, but yeah, exactly the kind of thing I'm like, yeah, great, <laughs> some trash for this, love it. Um, but yeah, the art style, not quite 100% my taste, but I enjoyed the story nonetheless. This is Feverish by Takaaki Kusaka, and I have two copies of this, and I have not read either of them. So once again, this is another title that I haven't read and I don't know much about. Um, yeah, I don't know why I've got two title, two copies of this title, I just do. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why I have two copies of this title, but I do. Um, yeah, feverish. Don't know anything about it. Sorry. 
This is Exotic and Delicious Fate by Ryoku Tsunoda and it's a little bit dirty so I'm going to have to give it a good clean. Um, I might do a video on how to keep your manga clean, that's a nice one to do. Um, anyway, uh, it's not the best condition so it's a little bit uh, yellowed around the edges. Um, and I know I read this, I think I read it last year and even like flicking through it and reading the synopsis I was like kind of rings a bell but not 100% so there was like a mystery at the end and I was like no I don't know what the answer to that mystery is I don't know I can't remember so it was obviously not as memorable a uh, title as uh, others are but um, yeah I have it I've read it but I can't tell you much about it nope no memory of it I'll have to actually do a review video of things just so that I can actually remember what they're about from now on this is cut by Toko Kawaii. I uh, really love Toko Kawaii's work um, and I was really happy to be able to get a copy of Cut. I managed to get it for a fairly good price. Um, but um, I haven't read this title yet even though I just purchased it fairly recently. And that's because it seems to be like a like a, a tragedy, you know, very angsty one. And I just have to make sure that I'm in the right frame of mind and the right mood to be able to read these titles. Um, so yeah, a Toko Kawaii title that I love is The Scent of Apple Blossoms, <laughs> so go check that one out because I love it and it's not um, depressing or angsty in any real way, but it's really good. So yeah, I do have high hopes for more Toko Kawaii, I want to, as I've said in a previous video, read all of her work together. I think that would be a good way to review her work. This is Selfish Mr. Mermaid, Volumes 1 and Volume 2 by uh, Nabako Kamo. Um, one of them was really difficult to get hold of. I can't remember which volume it was, but um, the art style, her art style, is not one that I particularly like. Um, especially you can see like huge big eyes versus small eyes. Like That's anatomically just, just wrong. <laughs> So, um, I haven't actually ever read this. I remember it was quite difficult to get hold of one of the one of the titles. I think I might have um, like two volume ones and one volume two, just because it was difficult to hold of. And I think I ended up having to buy the the whole set. And I don't particularly like it when uh, June. It's just a little thing, but when June has the old version and then the new version over the span of a series, I just it just irks me. <laughs> just irks me slightly uh, so yeah um, it, it doesn't it's not a big thing but it just is one of those little things that's annoying so I haven't actually read Selfish Mr Mermaid yet this is Author's Pet by Deco Cotorino which is one of the best uh, names I just love it Deco Cotorino what a brilliant name um, and I have two copies of Author's Pet this is a series of uh, like one shot stories or I think the main story has a couple of chapters um, I have read it, I read it last year for my Reading BL Challenge and I have vague memories of it. The main story is about someone who injures um, an author and so he has to help this author around the house and um, typing up his novels which are uh, steamy romance ones so <laughs> it's it's kind of old style, I have to say. The art style inside is quite old fashioned. The stories are so so, not of the memorable kind. So, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily spend a huge amount on Author's Pet. Get it for a, a good price, get it for a cheap price. Don't spend too much. I have two copies. I'll sell one one day. <laughs> I won't need two of these. This is Clear Skies Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Akira. Sugano, Etsumi, Ninomiya. These two authors slash artists work together uh, a lot. They've worked together, I think that's just generally, they're like a team. They're like Clamp, except for just the two of them. And they work together all the time. Clear Skies is a brilliant story. Um, I was so happy that when I was in Japan, they were re-releasing or reissuing the whole series um, with brand new external covers um, and this is such a good series the Obinata family um, oh, so good it's just so good but the the volume that I wish they would print is like the fifth or the sixth volume um, and that is Akinobu's story Akinobu is on the front cover of volume one he's the one with the glasses 
he's the quiet one. He's the one that I kind of relate to the most because I grew up in quite a large, boisterous family. Um, so I do connect with this story on a personal level. Akinobu has glasses. I have glasses. He's the quiet type that likes to read and study. And I'm the quiet type that likes to read and study. And then he eventually, in, in like one of the final volumes, gets his own love story and hots mixy times and becomes um, independent. And he has the best character because he's the one that everyone, you know, is actually quite afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> the one that doesn't show a lot of emotion, so when they do cry, everyone's like really taken aback. And uh, the one that, you know, no one actually uh, expects to get angry, but when they get angry, everyone sits and listens and gets told off. <laughs> and so I relate to Akinova so much, so much. Um, oh, it's just, I really wish that that was the volume that was printed because it's my favourite. Um, I do like the first two volumes, but I just wish there was more. My copies aren't the best quality, but these are quite old ones, as you, as you know, they're the large trim, so, yeah. Um, these authors, Akira Sugano and Itsumi Ninomiya, have another series in Japanese um, as well, that's a quite a long-running series, and I, I wish that was being published as well in English. <sighs> Things like that, I do, I would like more of their work. It's an old-fashioned art style. I'm sure there's lots of people looking on the covers going, nah, not for me. But the, oh, I just love the stories. The stories are really deep. The characters have a lot of depth. Um, and as I've shown earlier, they have a novel version of Clear Skies as well. So I wish I wish we could have Akinobu's story. He's my absolute favourite. This title is Ryu Yamakami's Sign Kiss. Um, I have not read it, I can't tell you what it's about, sorry. This is one of the, the ones that I haven't read yet, so I don't have an opinion on. Um, it is a Ryu Yamakami story, so I would like to read it because I do generally like her work. So, one to read in the future. This is Crazy Star by Sakurako Hanafubugi, and this is one volume in a four volume set. And I'm missing one of the volumes um, at the moment. I'm keeping my eyes out for it to go at a lower price biding my time, hoping that it won't be snatched up, probably will be, but maybe um, soon I'll be able to get it and then I'll have the full complete set and be able to read it. But until then I haven't read it yet and I don't know what it's about. So uh, yeah, this is one to read in the future when I have the complete set. Uh, the light's starting to go a bit here so it's going to get a little bit darker. I think I might have to um, see it's going to rain soon. <sighs> anyway, uh, so this is Yo Takumi's Melted Love. Uh, this is about a doctor trying to seduce a model, and that's all I know because I haven't read it, so I looked at the synopsis on the back. Sorry. <laughs> this is another one of my two reads. I don't think there's many left in the drawer that I've actually read. So this is Our Everlasting, Volume 1 and Volume 2, and this is by Toko Kawaii. Um, as I've said, some of her works I haven't read yet, so this is one that I haven't read yet. Um, it's uh, one of the old ones, so it's DMP. So that's how old it is, and my copies are quite old, and, and they're a little bit beat up, and they need a bit of TLC as well. So, um, I think they're very easy to get hold of, though. So if you're after them, they're, you can get them for a really cheap price. This is another Fumi Yoshinaga title. This is the Moon in the Sandals Volume Two. I have Volume One in my other collection. Um, this, as you can see, still has the plastic on. It's a brand new copy, um, even though it's quite old. <laughs> Uh, so I haven't read it yet either. So there's still so much for me to read, but this is another one I haven't read. I'll read it when I get them together, I think. This is Little Butterfly, Volume 1 by Hinako Takanaga. Uh, this is another one of her earlier works. I like Little Butterfly. It's a cute story. It's a three-volume story. I have the other volumes. In fact, I probably have another Volume 1 <laughs> in my other collection. So it's a complete set, but just not here in this drawer. So this is the one volume that I have in this collection, Volume 1. Hopefully you can actually see this. Uh, this is uh, Steel Moon Volume 2 by Makoto Tatano. I have a Volume 1 elsewhere in my collection. I remember it being interesting, sort of dystopian future type weird sci-fi-esque stories uh, that Makoto Tatano has written in the same kind of vein as Ninth Sleep. So it's one of those type uh, stories. So if that's uh, something that might interest you, Go check out Steel Moon. As you can see, it's a brand new copy. Um, 
not too difficult to get hold of. So this is my other Yamada Yugi title, this is Dry Heat. As I've said before, I love Yamada Yugi, so I'm very happy to have this title. This is one of her earlier works, it's about a sort of um, uh, long-term love, love from when you're a child and you fall in love with someone who's older than you and looks after you. And it's about um, a boy who goes to a very fancy school and he kind of disappears and someone says, oh, he's going to come and, and he's going to go and find you. So he, he goes and finds the person that he's been in love with since he's a child. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an interesting story. There's lots and lots of different secondary characters and like I said uh, about Open the Door to Your Heart, the secondary characters are fun, they're comedic, there's a bit of, um, you know, creates other tensions and lets the characters play off of each other and have interesting, fun, witty dialogue and that's uh, what I really like about Yamada Yugi's works, the fun, witty dialogue. Very adult, fun, witty, witty dialogue. So yeah, Dry Heat is another one that I enjoy. Not as much as Open the Door to Your Heart, it's lower on the tier of, of likeness but it's her work and so I enjoy it. Now I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce this. Is it La Esperanza? La Esperanca? I'm not entirely sure. By uh, Chigusa Kawaii and this is a seven volume series um, and I have volume four and volume seven in this drawer but I think I have the full volume one through seven somewhere else. Um, Maybe that's the case, but I think I have, like, I think these are extras that came with other things. Um, so yeah, I haven't read the series, it's seven volumes, so it's quite a long one. Um, and I didn't get them all at the same time, so it was like over time I was collecting them. So I was avoiding reading it so that I didn't uh, spoil it for myself. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what this is about, but I have volume four and a volume seven. Now this is June Manga's version of A Strange and Mystifying Story, Volume 3, and I have two volumes of Volume 3. This is a story by uh, Tsuta Tsutsuki. Um, I have Volume 1 of the June Manga version, and I don't think I have a Volume 2 of it. So I do need to get Volume 2, even though I have the full set in another drawer. Volumes 1 through 7, thank you Sublime, thank you Sublime, thank you Sublime. <laughs> I would still like to get the volume 2, uh, just to have the complete set of this was what was published by June, um, even though uh, since Sublime started publishing it, I have not had the huge desire to go out and search for volume 2 at a brilliant price, um, because I know I have the series anyway, I have it, I can read it any time in its completion, so that burning desire to collect these is not uh, very strong. So I'm happy to have them. For some strange reason I have two copies here. I might actually have a third copy in my other collection. <sighs> duplicates, duplicates, duplicates. <laughs> so yeah. Um, one to get, but not my favourite volume out of the series, volume 3. So this is the final title in this drawer and that is Antique Bakery by Fumi Yoshinaga. Uh, and I only have volume 1, 2 and 3. When I was buying this, I thought the person had put it as like the complete set, so I purchased it thinking it was the complete set, and then when it arrived I was like, hold on, isn't there another volume? Uh, so I thought I was getting a really good deal, when in actual fact I was getting someone's like sloppy seconds. <laughs> that kind of feels like. Um, and they're not in the best condition either, so I wish they were a bit better. Uh, so yes, unfortunately, I do not have the complete set of Antique Bakery. I would like Volume 4 and I have tried to get a copy, but I uh, saw one fairly recently and I was like, oh, I can just get that, and it's just a little bit more than cover price, so I'll maybe wait, and then someone else got it. So I'm thinking around cover price is what I'm going to have to pay even just to get a copy. I I'm probably not going to get a bargain copy. For this one. Um, Antique Bakery does have an animation so if you like um, animation instead of reading the manga you might want to check that out so you can get the full story but what I really love, what I really love is the Korean drama. I thought that was great. The fact that they made it was kind of groundbreaking at the time that they were taking this uh, Japanese manga that was a BL-esque one and making it into a drama. I thought that was really good, I really enjoyed it, and that was probably one of the first Korean dramas I ever watched. So yeah, um, go check out Antique Bakery um, as a Korean drama as well. 
So that's everything in drawer number eight. Um, this is not my complete uh, June manga collection. I have another drawer, drawer number nine, which mostly just has June titles in it. And I have my other collection of June titles in my other collection. And I'll go through that in video number nine <laughs> because this is already ridiculously long. <laughs> Um, there is um, a bit of an issue with the lighting, so sorry guys, it started off fairly bright and it started to get darker and darker as the video went on. Um, that's what happens when you live out in the middle of nowhere in the wilds. Sometimes you just got to uh, take what lighting you get. So um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, June manga and yaoi novel um, collection. Uh, there is more still to come. I have a lot more of this um, publisher to show. So if you're interested in that, stick around for video number nine, which I think will be my last one. I will do that last one and, and then that's me. <laughs> uh, I hope you've been enjoying this. Um, take care, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.